On this week's Real Talk, we're gonna hear an amazing story about your parents and an accident with a drunk driver. That's right, and we're also gonna talk about Hulda the prophetess and how she helped get Israel back on track with the scriptures. We'll also talk about where the Book of Mormon intersects the Old Testament, coming up in just a minute. Hello and welcome to Real Talk, Come Follow Me. Hi, John. Hi, Kainalyn. How you doing? So good today. Yeah, just today. Well, yeah, because it's so warm. I know. I love July. Yes. It's so great. Second Kings 17 through 25. Uh-huh. We are not guaranteeing we're going to cover. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. We're just going to go where the Spirit directs. Yeah. And specifically, as we study Second Kings, we learn about the tribes and the scattering and the rise of a lot of kings. Some mm-hmm. are good. Some are not good. Right. And, and that's why it's the Second Kings book. Yeah. Right? And I want to talk today specifically about... A good king. Okay, good. Yeah, one of the good kings. Let's that's, start out on a good note. Yeah, yeah. There's plenty of bad kings to look at and all the mistakes they made and all the wickedness they led Israel into, but I want to start with a positive king who I had an experience with this time as I went, went through the text that I don't remember having mm-hmm. before, and so I'm happy to share it. But before I talk about King Hezekiah, I'd like our audience just to consider a question. This is just prepping us. Okay. I want you to think about the last time you needed a miracle or a blessing in your life that just seemed completely out of reach or seemed basically impossible when you looked at your life's current context. Just think about that. Sit on that for a second. When was the, and maybe it's right now mm-hmm. when we've got, I know we'll have plenty of people that are listening that are waiting on that miracle right now that just seems impossible. Okay, let's talk about Hezekiah as you keep that in your mind. 2 Kings 18, 3, 6, and 7. Hezekiah did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. For he clave to the Lord. He departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. So he's just like, enough is enough. I'm going to trust in God. I'm no longer going to... I don't, be afraid. It, it, it would be the metaphor in our lives of, I'm going to change. <laughs> I'm not gonna surrender to evil influences anymore. I'm gonna change. So the blessing specifically that King Hezekiah wanted, of course, was freedom from Assyria, right? Um, He was completely outnumbered. It's it's something, it's just like, are you crazy? You can't rebel against the Assyrians. Like, you're crazy, man. But he trusted in a higher power, just like David did with Goliath. So the king of Assyria hears that Hezekiah is rebelling and he sends a big old army and some messengers to kind of put him in his place. Okay, and I love these verses in 2 Kings 18, 19, and 20. The messengers from the king of Assyria, who were kind of threatening Hezekiah, say this. Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, what confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Like, are you, what makes you think this is an even, even a possibility? Like, you, you must really be out of your mind. Verse 20, on whom dost thou trust? Mm -hmm. that thou rebellest against me. On whom, and I just thought, this is so beautiful because it's obviously who he trusts in. Yeah, I could see Goliath, right? Like speaking to David. Or last week, our discussion about who is for you versus against. Right, right. And he's just like, man, you got got a big army out there, but I I I got got a bigger army. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So take note of what Hezekiah was trusting in. So first, he sends a prophet, sorry, a messenger to the prophet at the time, who's Isaiah. Okay. And Isaiah says, don't worry, you're going to be good, man. God's got your back. Keep going, buddy. Right? And so... You're a fan of Isaiah. I do. I love Isaiah. Yeah. So when Hezekiah hears this, he's totally like emboldened and he's like, yes, I'm going to do this. And he gives a prayer and I loved this prayer. As you listen to this prayer, consider the miracle you're still waiting for in your life, whatever that is. Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims. Thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. That's beautiful. 
the story ends in Second Kings 19.35 with some, it says the angel of the Lord came down and like destroyed most of the army that was sent there to threaten him. They all ran away with their tail between their legs and Hezekiah slash God wins. It's miracle number one for Hezekiah. Miracle number two, Hezekiah after this gets sick. Mm -hmm. He's on his deathbed. Isaiah comes to him and says, get your house in order. You're gonna die. Hezekiah prays, 2 Kings 20, verse 3. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Well, God responds to Hezekiah through Isaiah, and he says, I hear you. I'm going to let you live for 15 more years. And he gives him 15 more years of life before he dies. Miracle Which is two. interesting, like, if you knew exactly how much more time, how would <laughs> right. you do things different? Well, and how many of us in that situation would even ask uh -huh. for the miracle? We'd just be like, if a prophet told you, <laughs> uh, yep, get your house in order, you're going to die, I'd be like, well, that's it, be packing my bags, right? I wouldn't be like, mm, I'm going to go see if there's any more time to be had. Because there's not always time to be had. I want to be clear about that. We all know this, right? We've experienced this painful reality. As much as we'd like to extend someone's life, sometimes it's just, obviously it just doesn't happen. And I just thought, I had an experience with Hezekiah this time because I remembered a story, an experience that me and my family had back in 2019. And in our prepping for this episode, I told you the story already so I could wrap my emotions around it so I don't get too emotional because it's, it's close to my heart. In 2019, in October of 2019, my mom and my dad just, Oh, the ultimate just good people are driving home from a movie from date night in southern Utah on a, a country road. And um, a drunk driver comes into their lane and hits them head on. On a, on a you know, 60 mile an hour road. Um, if, you, if you look at my parents' car, there, there's just no reason why they should be alive, period. I just got a call from my brother-in-law. He said, you gotta come down, uh, go to the hospital in Provo, Utah, where they were being life flighted. As I'm coming down the hill, I see uh, the first chopper life flight landing with my mom, the second one's coming with my dad. And I'm waiting, it's a while before I'm allowed to go back into this uh, emergency room OR situation to see both my parents lying on gurneys. My mom got the worst of it, her side of the car didn't have as many airbags and things as my dad. So her, 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 her little body, a body where she had never broken a bone before in her life. Oh my gosh. Yes, never broken a bone before in her life. It was just, just crushed. And I, I, I can't begin to itemize the, the extent of her injuries from head to toe. But I found her there wrapped unconscious, wrapped in all kinds of bandages, tubes, they, everything coming out, surrounded by about six to eight surgeons and medical professionals, they were trying to prioritize what to try to fix first, and is there any hope for this woman to even live? Well, my dad was conscious. He was, uh, had a lot of painkillers in him, and so he was kind of incoherent, but his face was very scary. But I remember giving him a blessing, and it wasn't too hard for me to give him that blessing because he was conscious and I knew, I just kind of had this, he's, he's gonna make it through. But when I came to my mom, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know whether I dare give her a blessing. Does that make sense? Because it was so severe. And I just thought, I'm, I just didn't know what to do. I felt so overwhelmed by the severity of her situation. And the surgeons finally just decided they were gonna hit this per certain thing first and helping her. And they said, is there anything else you want before we take her in? And I just was like, oh. And I said, you know, I, yes, there is something. Cause I just had this thought. Have I revealed to you, John, that your mother is appointed unto death? Do you know she's gonna die? And I was just like, no. And I just had this thought. Well then, your default sort of approach is bless her. Bless her, ask for a blessing. So I remember I uh, asked these surgeons, I said, I don't mean to impose, but are any of you here a member of the Church of Jesus Christ and you'd be willing to assist me in giving this woman a blessing? You should have seen the incredulous sort of looks on their faces, like, right? Like, do you see the state? Right. They're like, come on, man. It was pretty like, come gruesome, on. Just, right? Just let us take her back. Like, yeah, come on. And I just said, please. And one of them said, I will. 
So I put my hands on my mom's head and I got down really close to her ear so she could hear. She was unconscious. Right? She wasn't. She was just, she, she was all masked up. And you know, I mean, it was just, it was very, I could hardly get in through all the, the gear and stuff to put my hands on her head. And I was whispered a, a very basic blessing in her ear. And I remember mustering all the faith I could and just saying, you're gonna get through this. And it was really just kind of begging God. I was just like, you're gonna get through this. But in my mind, I'm like, help her get through this, please. And she, they put her in a medically induced coma after this. It started nine months of being in a bed. Couldn't get out, you know, uh, doctors up and down. She's gonna live, she's gonna die. When even when she, after she went home after nine months, she had a, a series of strokes and things where and the doctors were like, oh, she may not live another year. And okay, all that to just come to just a, you know, this, this last June, when my last son went through the temple, I was waiting in the celestial room, waiting for him to come through for the first time, right? And uh, my parents were with me. Out came my mom, out came my dad. And I had a moment where it just kind of came full circle, you know? When I saw my mom hug my son and welcome him into this last room and my dad, and I just thought, holy cow. <laughs> How is this even possible? And I thought back to that night when I gave her the blessing, I thought of all the blessings my brothers gave her and other loved ones, all the hundreds of prayers, if not thousands that were offered in her behalf and my father's behalf, and there they are. I don't know if they'd still be here today without all those blessings and prayers, is what I'm saying. Hezekiah got 15 more years. Where might they be without all those blessings and prayers and so? Thank you. I, as you were talking, I had brought to my remembrance a moment where my own health was. And I remember kneeling down and asking and pleading to God, like, I knew Rob and my kids would be fine, but could he just gift me? And so before you even started to share, I was just feeling that what you're just communicating, just the, there's a lot of people that have prayed for those things. And that right. is not the reality. Their right. moms have not right. recovered, right? right. Or um, my kids are, are grown, you know, and... Um, my doctor had the same experience where he was woke up one night thinking she's that I wasn't going to make it. Yeah. And so it just feels like I have an awareness of what did Hezekiah feel? What has your mom felt as she's had now yeah. all these family moments? Yeah. Because can you imagine? I mean, I would love to hear how many prayers she prayed as she laid in a bed oh, thinking man. I'm not anyone's benefit right now. Yeah. And what's the nature of my life going to be yeah. after this? Her and journey is a miraculous Her one. faith, right, to access that same power into that recovery process. Yeah, and I think I think the, the point for me would just be like, ask for the blessing. Yeah. Ask for it. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't, I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but like, ask for it. I remember having that. I, I was scared that I had knelt down and just told the Lord no yeah. after he had just said, yeah. you're not gonna. Right. And I was like, wait, can I tell him no on that calling change? Yeah. You know? Right. And then I, I found a Wilford Woodruff story where his wife said, no, can I please go back? Yeah. And, and we were studying Wilford Woodruff that yeah. year. And I'm like, your mom choosing had to keep choosing into that. Yeah. Your family had to keep yeah. choosing it. Right. Hard. And to ask for it. That's where the faith is, right? Is the asking. We're going to stop crying now and we're going okay, to transition. We are. We're going to talk about hold up. <laughs> we're kind of wondering if we're we're the only podcast going to talk about hold up. I hope we might be, but maybe others are going to find her yeah, as well. I yeah. um, we hope so. Hold up the prophetess. Hold up the prophetess. We're talking about three, I think maybe only three verses in Second yeah. Kings 22. Holda was a prophetess. She had the gift of prophecy. She lived in an area of Jerusalem, which I didn't, I wasn't aware of this known as the college. Yeah. And she, it was super rare during her time that people learned to read, even more rare for a woman to learn to read. Um, 
during this time, there's been a ton of wickedness, but this this king has emerged, King Josiah. And King Josiah is starting to awaken to like, yeah. let's make a change, you know? And he's decided that he wants to rebuild the rundown temple. Mm. And in the process of that, while they're doing the renovations, a priest finds a book that contains the law given to Moses. Mm. And he's Found not- Found the scriptures. Yeah. They've been lost for a yeah. long time. But King Josiah is like, <laughs> Uh, is that fake? Like, who planted it there? Yeah. Is it really what we think it is? Is it really the word of God? Because if it is, it's a chastisement. It's a judgment on yeah. what is being done currently, right? Yeah. Like, it's a it's a bar that they're not reaching. Yeah. And so he he rents his clothes because he realizes how wicked the people are, and he asks his priests and scribes to go find out if these are really scripture. And so he, the men go and find Holda. Now, think about just culturally. Right. Culturally, this is crazy. This is yeah. an unknown yeah. territory for for a lot of the people. Like, yeah. wait, you went and found a female that is learned, <laughs> that reads, and you're going to ask her yeah. to, like, basically just... Dis- verify dis- the verify. legitimacy of this document. Right, and direct yeah. the, the, the path forward for this king yeah. and the people. In verse 14, it says that the priest, um, I'm not going to say all their names. <laughs> Did you notice how I just edited He's that? right through them all. There was like four names. I was just like, and skip, skip, skip. And it says, went unto Holda, the prophetess, the wife of... Shalom, the son of Tikva, I don't know. You're doing good. And then some other people. (laughs) (laughs) And what's interesting was the keeper of the wardrobe. Did you realize, like, her husband was, like, the fashion person, right? (laughs) Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they communed with her. And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord of God, Israel, tell the man that sent you to me, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book, which the king of Judah hath read. So this was confirmation. This is scripture. You're going to be held accountable because you can't play ignorant now. Right. You know. And and Holda reads this book and, and confirms that it's scripture. And the interpretation of that really propels King Josiah as a righteous king to to follow the scripture and and make some changes and keep the covenants and God's commandments. And so as I was thinking about this, what a great week, especially to let your kids know about Hulda, who yeah. I don't think she's a common right. figure in the Old Testament yeah. that we talk about. Yeah. And then also about how her specific gifts and her learning was instrumental at this like key moment to where her knowledge and her gifts of knowledge change the directions of things. And it made me think about how our own education, our own gifts, our own learning can be a blessing in building the kingdom. And so I want to talk about some recent examples. And so we have a little yeah. list, current examples of, of righteous women that have educations. Now, education can be from a university to uh, my mother-in-law, who's brilliant at yeah. sewing clothes, and yeah. I am not, right? School of life. Right, the school of life. So, yeah. But specifically, especially with Holda, who yeah. was in a, an environment where it was formal education and learning, yeah. we want to spotlight a few current examples. Yeah, especially in terms of uh, female leaders in our church. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a few examples, and just uh, I'll start with Sister Camille and Johnson. President. She's served for the past year as the primary general president. She and her husband, Douglas, served as a companion and mission president in the Peru Arequipa. Uh, you know, I think we'll get right. messages about yeah. that. From 2016 to 2019, and when their service ended, she returned to work as a lawyer at the Snow, Christensen, and Martineau Law Firm. She served in teaching and leadership assignments in her local congregation. She received English and law degrees from the University of Utah. And she and her husband have three sons since she was born in Pocatello, Idaho. Awesome. So just a shout out to yeah. Sister Johnson. And she's being moved from primary to General Relief Society, which I don't know if that's happened before where they announced, like, it's going to happen. Yeah, so know. one of her counselors that's going to be serving with her is Sister Kristen M. Yee. And among... A lot of her experiences, I think this is one of the coolest things. She worked previously with Disney as an, in the interactive studio for 13 years and has worked on the church's animation uh, team. So I think that's cool that as a sister that, like, she's yeah. had that career as an yeah. animator and worked with, with Disney. Yeah. So here's a highlight for Sister Amy Wright. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's first counselor 
Uh, uh, she's also served as a second counselor in the primary general presidency. Um, the thing that stood out to me, I liked how she, she worked at uh, Marquette University in the Diedrich College of Communications, and she helped facilitate the Urban Journalism Camp for Inner City Youth. So cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. And just to finish up on our little list is a shout out to Sister Tracy Browning. She's uh, going to be the second counselor in the new Relief Society General Presidency. And uh, among many things, including uh, coming from Jamaica, in the West Indies, where her parents were born. She spent 15 years working in the financial service industry at Morgan Stanley before joining the church's employment. And I just think what a great week to kind of spotlight how the the education, the formal education of this prophetess yeah. influenced this king yeah. and helped turn the direction of his people and how we have that same blessing of having general women leadership that are yeah. educated and blessing the kingdom with their education. Thank goodness for Holda, right? Yeah. She helped she helped Josiah and by extension Israel rediscover the scriptures mm -hmm. again in their lives and the power uh, that come from them. And uh, it brings us to a, a good quote from President Kimball mm -hmm. about rediscovering the scriptures. He says, I am convinced that each of us at some time in our lives must discover the scriptures for ourselves, not just discover them once, but rediscover them again and again. I feel strongly that we must, all of us, return to the scriptures just as King Josiah did and let them work mightily within us, impelling us to an unwavering determination to serve the Lord. I find, and here's the most famous part of his <laughs> quote, I find that when I get casual in my relationships with divinity, and when it seems that no divine ear is listening and no divine voice is speaking, that I am far, far away. If I immerse myself in the scriptures, the distance narrows, the spirituality returns. I find myself loving more intensely those whom I must love with all my heart and mind and strength, and loving them more, I find it easier to abide their counsel. I think that's such a great invitation to rediscover the scriptures. Yeah. And I think um, we have Book of Mormon examples where the scriptures were so important, right? That Lehi made sure his boys went back and got yeah. them. Yeah. We we know about the Jaredites and they're needing that language and mm. how preserving that was. And so for those Old Testament students that are a little bit overwhelmed still, it's July and they're like, I'm sure I'm going to figure out this Old Testament, but I'm not quite there yet. This week, I think, is a an intersection between maybe a book of scripture that you maybe feel more comfortable with, and that's the Book of Mormon, and right. where it intersects with the Old Testament. So in 2 Kings 24, uh, we read about how Zedekiah was 21 years old when he started his reign. He reigned for 11 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hamolta. And then as you jump into 2 Kings 25, all of his sons in Zedekiah's eyes were killed. It also says that his eyes were put out. Mm. And so if you're just reading the Old Testament record, King Zed Zedekiah loses his he boys. Loses all of his boys. They're gone. Yeah. But if you have the Book of Mormon, which we do, right. we have more information. Moloch is one of his sons. And when we see that in 589 BC, when this happens, the Bible record stops there. The Book of Mormon clarifies in Helaman 8.21, and then I think further in Mosiah 25.2, that Moloch is one of the sons that is preserved, and he leaves to come to the Americas sometime after Lehi and his family yeah. leave Jerusalem. So I just think if you're trying to find ways in which history intersects or you're feeling still overwhelmed by your journey through the Old Testament this year, yeah. what a great week to kind of point out yeah. where we see the, the Old Testament parts of the Book of Mormon come alive. Yep. And Moloch is preserved, and I think that is just another example of how God makes sure, you know, he preserves. Yeah. My, my own father is a first-generation convert, and I feel like in many ways he was that, like rescue party that right. shifted the generational patterns for his family. And that's the line that I came through in the same way that Moloch was preserved. So that's, awesome. that's my thought as we go into our invitation this well, week. Well, thank you. Yeah, our invitation this week uh, is a, sort of a tribute to Hulda and the women in our lives. We'd like you to consider the context in your life uh, where women could have more of a voice. And we would invite you to look for opportunities to invite those women in these contexts to have 
more of a voice this week in any way you can. Thank you for joining us this week, and we hope you'll join us next week for a Real Talk Come Follow Me. Do you like Real Talk Come Follow Me? Then like and subscribe. <laughs>